um, and um, just for those people who don't know you, uh, uh, is that um, I googled you this afternoon, and uh, it turns out that you're the number one documentary photographer in Britain, and you're number five in the world. <laughs> so uh, it's a peculiar uh, honour to have you sitting opposite me, and, but more importantly that you have donated these 16 prints uh, to what is your first permanent exhibition, which given that you're so uh, famous, it's quite an honour for the barracks to have one of our first permanent exhibitions. Um, and uh, for those of you who come to the barracks, which you're all uh, uh, very invited to do, um, uh, it's um, part of a, a series of works that you've done since you came to Ireland in 1980. Um, and just, just for people who don't know your work, how would you describe the main subjects that have inter interested you over the years? Well, I came to Ireland because uh, my wife got a job as uh, a speech therapist in Kennedy Trim. So I relished the opportunity to come here and start photographing everything that was going on, from shops to fairs to uh, supermarkets, uh, houses, dance halls. So it was 30 years ago, and Ireland was very different mm -hmm. then to what it is now. So okay. it was a fascinating exercise. And I look back on these pictures, it reminds me of that time, which is almost unrecognisable in contemporary Ireland. Yes, um, and uh, I should say that these photographs come from your book, um, uh, can, uh, from uh, which we are now uh, show you, is um, uh, which was published two years ago. Two years. That's right, with Damiani. But they, they were originally in a book published uh, in 1984 called okay. Fair Day. Uh, right. Which also had text written by Vincent O'Toole. Okay. As so this one. What is there an advantage or a disadvantage to have black and white that you would say that these were appropriate for the time, or would you have preferred to shot them in color? No, I think it was. Uh, you know, when I think back to the seventies and the early eighties, mm. if you're a serious photographer, you're almost obliged to work in black and white. So color became more accepted in the late seventies. And uh, as soon as I moved back from Ireland in 1982, in fact, uh, they introduced this medium format camera called a Plowbell, and I then started shooting in colour myself. And once you go to colour, you never go back to black and white. It's like uh, analog to digital. You, you but you mean, being so innovative and quirky, I can't imagine why you wouldn't go back to black and white. Uh, well, uh, fair enough. Uh, I will bear that in mind. Okay, just a tip. Um, so, in, in, Again, it's for me. The question is: is that when you came here, you had an idea and images that you were looking at, and this is important because when McGarren uh, is talking about writing, he says that it begins with an image. There's a, a particular thing that evokes a memory, that evokes a, a time and a space. So, what kind of images? Because a lot of the images in the exhibition and your work, uh, they're uh, they're not an image that photographers at the time would have thought of taking. Well, I, I'd say uh, there was, you know, I, I got to know a lot of the photographers who were working uh, in those days, and we would all go around to different horse fairs, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but I got sort of, um, you know, there, constantly put a genuine event to photograph. Uh, but I also thought we must ex expand this, and that's why I was doing um, things like bungalows, things like the, the, the dance halls. So I was trying to think uh, beyond the sort of most obvious subject, uh, even though I did the most obvious subject too. And I guess if you look at the uh, original book, it's got these five different chapters mm -hmm. in. And uh, one, I mean, it was just the time when the Celtic Tiger was, was taking off. And okay. people, they, you know, I was in the EU, they'd done very well out of being that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were building these new bungalows. They wanted to get away from the, the tired croft, damp croft, so they'd literally uh, leave that and go and build a bungalow in the same grounds. Yes, uh, but it, it, see the, the thing I want to get at is is in an after of has this is that you know that that's a good image and for those who are not photographers, you know, you you the abandoned Mars mine for example, mm -hmm. yeah, you, uh, everybody else would see that's an eyesore, mm -hmm. and yet uh, you re realized that it had this iconic beauty, 
And part of it goes back to what you've often said before. You've, you've got to realize when you're photographing something that it won't be there forever. It, you know, time changes. And part of the thing as a documentary is to capture those things that will no longer be with us. And Bond and Boris Manners is obviously one of them. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, so yes, I think there's a responsibility for your documentary photographer to think about what is changing. You know, in a sense, you're sort of, uh, you're up front to the mm -hmm. changing society that you're photographing. Uh, and societies are constantly changing. And ever since coming to Ireland and then going on and coming back and doing more work in Ireland, mm -hmm. you can plot the changes, the introduction of the first McDonald's, uh, you know, the expansion of uh, mm -hmm. Dublin as being an IT centre and the wealth that came with that. That okay. was all interesting stuff to me. Um, okay. And then suddenly having gay marriages being accepted in Ireland, which, you know, back in the 80s, early 80s, would have been ridiculous to even consider. And um, one of the, the, the strong, uh, you, for me, is is that you're, there's a strong realist element in your photography, um, which is, uh, but, but it's mixed with um, a kind of a combination of the ludicrous, the humorous, and the, and the pathos. So it, it, there's, that seems to be a constant um, theme, and you can see it in this exhibition, it was a, a photograph of from Belmont Fair, of the woman looking into the window and, and, and the cow. I mean, that, those images are not going to uh, uh, probably ever occur again. Um, Correct. But it's, it's, that, it's, it's that juxtaposition of the ludicrousness and seeing it and saying, that's a, an iconic image. Well, the whole of, you know, the lives we lead are, are really ridiculous. Just we don't spot it, you know, because we're complacent. I mean, going to a supermarket, filling the car up with petrol, they're all rather bizarre acts, and they indeed are changing all the time. I mean, in 30 years' time, you know, petrol cars will be finished. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm very much in favour of being a witness to history, a witness to contemporary trends and ideas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's very much part of what I value as being a photographer. Uh, you know, the, the, the motivation is to take, take a great picture. You can't do that all the time. It's very rare great pictures happen. So you have the added bonus of actually having the ability to record, you know, changes, uh, which sort of justify why you're doing these things. And in, in when you're doing that, you hope also to get a great picture which will stand on its own. But that doesn't often happen. Um, and just to go back to the realist thing is that, uh, um, you know, one of the, if you like, the criticisms of McGarren was that in, in his realistic portrayal, of life in the garden land uh, was that uh, he was sometimes over realistic in, 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 um, mm -hmm. and can seem ruthless almost. Mm -hmm. And one commentator said something to the effect of that with his uh, razor sharp pen, he tore the characters of the local people mm -hmm. into pieces. Mm -hmm. you've, you've gone to the edge yourself in, in terms of your, your portrayal of people who want to, who'd like to see themselves in a different light and a different image of themselves. Um, and you've, you've explored that, you know, kind of saying, this is your humanity as I see it. I guess so, because if you just take an ordinary family album, not that they exist these days, but if we think of the accumulated pictures on our <laughs> smartphones, you know, they're telling a lie because everyone's smiling, everyone's happy, you know, dysfunctionality can't be mentioned, it's hidden. So, you know, we're always, you know, when we're producing our own images, we're mm. basically telling lies all the time. My you know, ambition is to try and cut through that and try yeah. and show the personal truth that I find when I observe these situations. Yes. Uh, and in, in doing that, you, um, you know, in, in portraying and seeing people different from, from how they might want to see and understand the life they want to live, um, there is that sense of that you see them differently but also that you see different difference in different cultures. So the question is, is what makes Ireland different? Yeah, very difficult to say exactly. I mean, it's to do with the topography, you know, the, the, mm. the friendliness of the people, the greenness of Ireland. Uh, I mean, there are quirks that have changed the Catholicism, you know, because when I think of England, you know, 40 years ago, it's much more stable than, it, it, you know, than say Ireland. Ireland has dramatically changed. Mm -hmm. England hasn't. I mean, yeah. it's developed. Uh, you, you know, if you look back at the 80s, 
uh, of pictures I took there, you can see they were done in that period. So it's very difficult for me to actually point out exactly what makes Ireland so Irish. That's one reason why I take pictures, in fact. Yeah. Because it helps me to you know, articulate my feelings towards these places that I visit and enjoy going to. Yeah, and you know, this afternoon, you know, we walked through Boyd, where you lived you know, for two years. And I was interested in the images that you, you, you went to photograph. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that, you know, that, you know, that attracted you? What images were there this afternoon? Um, well, I like bowls of oil at a shop window, because it felt like something from 30 years ago. Right. Um, I mean, I didn't take that many pictures, really. Yeah. I mean, when I look back now, I wish I'd photographed every shop in Boyle, right. as, it, as it was in 1981. We've got pictures of Heron's Bar, but not much more than that. Yeah. So even I, uh, you know, as a responsible documentary photographer, don't think to photograph everything, because it's so obvious. Yes. You know, and indeed, when we do up our houses, when we get yeah. a new kitchen or whatever, or bathroom, you know, it's very good to actually photograph yeah. the thing we're about to obliterate, because you can yeah. look back in years to come and think what bad taste you had. On that uh, wonderful note <laughs> of self-deprecation, uh, we'll thank you very much for, for doing this and uh, once again thank you very much for the exhibition. Okay, thank you Tom. <laughs>